So this is what quarantine swim practice looks like. Cody's been spending a lot of time in the bath. What, he needs a bath? This is boys time. We're just enjoying ourselves, okay? Gotta make sure we soap every little area like I gotta get under that little chin. Today's video is a bit of a heavy one, so I wanted to start out with, you know, kind of a, a light-hearted intro. been an interesting last 30 minutes. I just drove two hours from Bloomington, my house, to Evansville, Indiana. This is, this is Lily's hometown. This is Lloyd Pool. This is where we've been training the last two weeks. And 30 minutes ago, I got a notification sent to me that says, USA Today Sports, IOC member says that the 2020 Olympic Games will be postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic likely to summer 2021. So, I feel weird. I feel very, very weird. I think this kind of makes it official that it's definitely being postponed and that's definitely the right thing to do. The motivation to go to the pool now is just like evaporated because I've just been training the last couple weeks we've been coming here so the last the last two weeks I've been I've been alternating staying the night in Bloomington and staying the night here in town and I've been driving one way or the other each day so like I drive up Monday afternoon swim here Monday night stay here Monday night wake up swim here Tuesday morning and then drive back to Bloomington and basically repeat that for like a full week so I'm in the water every day and every day you know we've kind of been holding on to the fact that the games are still on right and we're still we're still grinding we're still prepping and now it's just like every meet is canceled so we don't know when we're going to compete again could be months and months and months and months and it's just kind of it's just a really big bummer i know that a lot of athletes i'm sure a lot of athletes are relieved and feel like a weight has been lifted off of them because of their training circumstances and because their preparation has been totally thrown out of whack i think most people feel that way I've just, you know, selfishly been holding on to hope because although some of my training has been compromised, I've still I've still been able to do the majority of it and I really didn't want to push this off another year. Just the the mental aspect, the the toll that it takes, the the structuring your life around everything, all that. It's just like, oh man. Ray and our coaches have also been driving up and coaching us through these practices. It's pretty much just been like me, Lily, Annie, Bailey, and Laura. And I imagine they're all on their way. I'm like 30 minutes early right now, so I think we'll probably still get in and swim. I don't, I don't, I don't even, maybe no one's gonna show up. I don't know. I, this is so strange. I will say that like as, as odd as the situation is and as weird as I feel, and the motivation is gone right now, obviously, because there's no meets for God knows how many months now. So like, what is the reason to train? But I'm definitely still gonna swim. Like I'm definitely still gonna get in the water. I've been in contact with pool companies to get a pool in my backyard as soon as physically possible. I still think that's gonna happen. I still love training. I love the sport. I love swimming. So I'm not just gonna like stop, maybe like a short break. But I don't know, I still kind of want to get in the water every day just to splash around because I do love it. I do enjoy it. Every day when you guys see me run into the pool saying best part of the day, I genuinely mean that. Even though there are obviously times when I'm not motivated. Like right now, I'm not motivated. But I, 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 I'm very fortunate still. And I need to remind myself that I'm very fortunate that I have this lifestyle and that I'm able to, you know, that I'm able, that I'm even able to feel this way. Like the fact that I'm in a position to be bummed out because a sporting event has been canceled. Like, that's coming from a place of privilege, right? Like, there are people around the world suffering right now, and I and a lot of other athletes just, you know, feel weird and are going through this whole thing or thinking about ourselves because of the games. But it's like, look, it's like, it's not that bad. I know I've said this before, but I really want to hammer this home. As bummed out as I am for myself, I'm far more upset and hurting for the first timers, for the people that this was definitely going to be their first games. And, you know, a year's a long time. A lot can happen in a year. And 
it just, I feel so much worse for those people. Once again, context. I understand the whole world is like falling apart. There are health concerns everywhere. There are far, 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 far bigger issues than a sporting event. But for the sake of, you know, the world that we kind of live in, in our, little, in our little swimming world, it's a big bummer. It's a really big bummer. Those are my initial thoughts and feelings on hearing that the games are going to be postponed. I mean, yeah. We just finished our fun practice. Ray made it way better than it was going to be. It's kind of a little emotional up in here right now. I'm trying not to cry. Annie almost, Annie almost made me cry there for a second. No, I'm not telling that you're crying. I'll, I'll cut it out. But this pool just got shut down. So uh, we are poolless actually. The day the Olympics has been postponed is the day we finally lose our, our last holdout pool. The governor of Indiana has shut everything down. So unless you have like a pool at your house, there are no other options. And I think we're gonna take a couple days uh, just a few days for our mental health at this point and just kind of relax, but I am going to be searching for another pool. Should the International Olympic Committee postpone the 2020 Tokyo Olympics? I'm here to propose the three main reasons, the three biggest reasons why they should. Reason number one health and safety. And this is the biggest reason of all of the different reasons why they should postpone the games. The health and safety of the world is the most important thing right now. We're in the middle of a worldwide epidemic that is affecting everyone across the world. And it's important for us as athletes to understand that no one is above the importance of health and safety of humanity. And as much as I don't want them to cancel the games, hosting the largest sporting event in the world just a few months after what is right now, as the time I'm filming this, the peak of this epidemic, doesn't seem like the smartest idea. It's a tragedy, it's horrible that it's killing people and that it's affecting everyone this way, but it's also a time for us as humans, just all over the world, to come together and work with one another and understand that it's our responsibility to protect and ensure the safety of everyone. And that's just the number one priority. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to understand all the different complexities and the nuances of the spread of this virus. But if the experts and the analysts and people who do understand those things are saying that hosting the Olympic Games and having this giant worldwide event where people from all over the world are coming together in masses is not a good idea, it's not a safe time to do so, then, then, then there's nothing else we can do. Reason number two, right now we have an uneven playing field. We're living in a time where the majority of athletes across the world are not able to adequately prepare for the games. How can you have an Olympic Games where six months before the games, the best athletes in the world aren't able to prepare for those games? It's truly an unfair playing field because some countries aren't affected the way other countries are. Right now, here in the United States, the majority of the United States national team swimmers, other Olympic gold medalists that I know personally, aren't able to swim. They don't have a facility to train in. They're not in the water. A lot of other national teams from other countries across the world are not able to train right now. And then you have other countries that are able to train. Then you have other national teams in other places around the world that are able to train. So it's, it's uneven. By hosting the Olympic Games with this current unfair playing field, you would be robbing the world, people from all over the world in different countries, of competing at the Olympic Games at their best, the way that they should have been able to. One of the main spirits of the Olympic Games itself is fair play and camaraderie from people all over the world. And right now, if we continue on this track and host the games as currently planned, you won't have that. You won't have what the Olympics represents, which is everyone at their best. Reason number three for postponing the games, and this is a big one, clean sport, doping control, drug testing. 
We gotta talk about this too. The most critical and most important time for drug testing is the six month window leading into the Olympics. And right now, because of this worldwide pandemic, the World Anti-Doping Agency isn't able to operate the way that it normally would. We're not drug testing people all over the world right now because guess what? Borders are closed. Doping control agents can't travel to these places to test people. If you host the Olympic Games this summer, it will be the first time in modern history where there wasn't strict drug testing procedures in place leading into the games during its most important time. You'll have a games where there hasn't been the proper policing and drug enforcement to ensure clean sport. Right now we've got a number of countries across the world that are able to train uninterrupted without doping control. That's a problem. How much drug testing is WADA conducting right now? I don't know, but I guarantee you it is not on par and on scale with what happened during the lead up to the 2016 Olympics or the lead up to the 2012 Olympics. It's just not. So those are the three main reasons why I think that they should. I think that the right thing to do is to postpone the games probably until 2021. Now, despite everything, everything that I just said, how is this affecting me personally? A lot of you guys have been asking me that. On one hand, I'm ready for the games this summer because I'm, I'm, I've, we've all been building up to this for so many years. I don't want that to just be taken away. I don't want to prolong it another year. I don't want to go through this a whole nother year. And I feel like most, most athletes feel that way, right? Most of us feel a bit conflicted. I, I don't want to go a whole nother year where I'm sacrificing everything in my life that to revolve around this one objective, right? Um, you know, I, I plan to continue swimming after the summer regardless. I plan to continue swimming for a number of years now, but it's the level of commitment where I can't just go on vacation and take three days off, right? I have to train every single day because I know what I have to do to make myself the best swimmer and position myself the best I possibly can be. And I'm, I'm ready to take that next step where swimming is still a big part of my life and I still put a lot of time and energy and I still make swimming videos and I still go to meets and I still compete, but it's not the central focus, right? I'm not, I'm not adjusting every other aspect of my life to fit into this mold of swimming fast. And that's my biggest thing, is that I've been preparing for the summer and been preparing for that next step. And other athletes across the country that I know feel similarly. They have, they have things that they've planned following, I mean, everybody's plans just blew up, okay? Everything just, just blew up, right? And so I feel extremely conflicted about it. On one hand, I hope that they hold the games because I personally still feel confident myself, but on the other hand, I don't know if that's the right thing to do from a safety standpoint. Also, it's not necessarily fair to everybody else. Also, the other, I mean, all the other things that I listed earlier, it's just, there's so many different shades of gray right now. So many different shades of gray. Um, it's crazy, and I know that this is really heavily affecting a lot of the Olympic athletes. A lot of them are freaking out right now. And they're right to do so, right? Any, anybody would, of course. Of course that's what's happening. I honestly don't know what's gonna happen, and I'm very conflicted about all the different things that are on the table, um, and I think most people feel that way. I think most people have a combination of feelings about a slew of different things. Um, this is crazy. So anyway, I plan to keep you guys in the loop on how I'm feeling, how wh what's going on. We'll continue to talk about this. Obviously, I'm gonna keep making videos and stuff. But for now, let's head inside because I've got something that is fun and exciting and new to talk to you guys about. So let's let's do that. You know. All right, everybody. Today's video is sponsored by Aspirex, which is. It's this really cool company and they've got this new tool, this new product called the Finesse Lane Vision. It's an app that I'm gonna get into in a second. It's the world's first AI powered swimming tracker that helps swimmers get Oh, I'm gonna get into it. It's really cool. You guys know how much I love anything that revolves around the world of swimming and helping swimmers get better and technology, all that stuff. Anybody that's followed my channel knows that. This new app called Lane Vision is perfect 
for right now. By the way, it launches today, it's available today for all the swimmers out there across this country and across the world who can't train but still want to engage in their swimming, that still want to find little ways to get better. It's for people that want to take that little extra step. If you're a highly motivated swimmer sitting at home that wants to get work done even while they can't go to the pool, listen up. Fortunately for me, being on the US national team, I have the resources of the US national team department. When I go to swim meets, they record our races and then they send us out all this crazy data, right? We get our we get our stroke counts, we get our stroke rates, we get our splits, we get v velocity, we get time to 15, we get all these data points that help break down our races and tell us, okay, what can we do better? What are we doing great? What do we need to work on? All those types of things. But most swimmers, haven't been able to get that stuff on their own until now. So Lane Vision is this app that allows you to go into it and record someone along the pool while they're swimming or record a race, hit finish, and then it spits out all these different data points for you which is really, really cool. Like if I had this when I was 13 years old or if my mom had this app when I was a little kid, we would have been all over it. Now obviously you can't do that right now, right? Because you can't swim, you can't do that. But what you can do, Lane Vision gives you the ability to import your race videos and then manually go through it and pick up all those different data sets. It's awesome. So this is the kind of thing that you can be doing at home right now. If you have videos of yourself swimming, if you have races recorded, you can plug these in easily into the app and then go through and start picking apart your races very professionally. It's super cool. This is an excellent tool for swimmers and coaches. There's a coaches review feature that allows you to do annotations live as the video is playing, that allows you to drop in text, that allows you to leave notes, and then you can share it to one another within the app. So now once the world is back to normal and we can all swim again, this app is perfect for parents and coaches and swimmers on deck to record people, record laps during practice, Practices or record races and in real time while the app is recording it's going to be spitting out all these different data sets for you to go back and review and compare to your other races to your other practices to your other sets and help you learn okay this is what's making me better this is my breakout to 15 on this race this is my breakout to 15 on this race if you're a swim nerd if you're a data person if you're looking to get better this is the kind of thing that like really excites me this is the kind of thing that is moving the swimming needle forward right it's making progress in the right direction and it's help ev it's helping everyone get better. This is the kind of thing that just that excites me. And with these in-app features that you can do on your own at home, if you can't go to the pool, you can still be working. It is amazing to me the high-tech technology that all swimmers have access to through an app on their phone now. This is the kind of stuff that used to only really be available to like Olympic level athletes and now anybody can get it. It's $2.99 a month or it's just under 30 bucks for the entire year. I mean, you know, three bucks, give it a shot. Check it out. If you've got some race footage of yourself, you can do these breakdowns, you can do this stuff. I mean, it's, it's one way to help you during this time for sure. And that's it for me, guys. As always, make sure you're following me on social media at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my videos with your swimmer friends. That really helps me. I'm planning on continuing to make videos during this time, even though who knows what, what the future of training and us being able to get into pools holds. We just don't know. But obviously, we're trying to remain as positive as we can. And um, I'll continue to update you guys. And um, everybody's just got to do their best. Social distancing, wash their hands, take care of one another. And that's it. Until my next video, I will see you guys later. <laughs>